Welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Josh Taylor, Tim Benz, taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600 on the Bordas and Bordas hotline. Tim, we talked Penguins trade in the top segment. We talked about Ole Mata being sent to Chicago for um, Dominic Cahoon and a fifth-round pick. Let's get into the That's Pirates. Dominic Calhoun in about two and a half weeks. <laughs> it's going to be that Dominic Calhoun. I'd give it two hours. I think you're giving people too much credit. Um, let's talk Pirates now. They lose in uh, Miami 4-3 to three of the final score after shutting them out last night. But uh, Dario Agrizal gets the start on the mound, 24-year-older, uh, making his Major League debut. Looked pretty good in the first three innings of the game. A couple things happened in the fourth inning, though, and one of them really wasn't his fault. Adam Frazier... Right. Throws one away in the left field. Probably could have been a double play ball. It turns into a run for, uh, for Miami. I almost called him Florida. That made it 3-2. to two. And then, of course, they throw another run after that to tie the game. And then they add a run in the fifth, and that was a difference maker. But there, there's a couple different things to take from it. The good news that we find out, Trevor Williams is expected to start against the Tigers on Wednesday. He will be back. Jordan Lyles throws a bullpen. He might be back soon. So it looks like the help that they had at the beginning of the season is on his way back. Yeah, first of all, are we going with Silent G for Arizal? I, I would like to go with Silent G because I just want to be able to call him Django. The G is silent. And anytime he gets a strikeout, he can do the six shooters and tick off Josh Donaldson, maybe. I'm kind of mad I didn't think of that first. <laughs> I'm kind of bothered by I that. I know. But feel free to use it at 11. Go right I, ahead. I, I will, All right. Use it at 11. I will attribute you properly. Um, did you? I saw your video that you showed of Trevor Williams. Does he still look a little hitchy in his delivery there? Like, I, not comfortable? I would imagine there's going to be some, some adjustment there. Yeah, and I'm hoping. I, I'm, for that point, I'm hoping he's not rushing himself. You know, and if that is the case, and that's scary. It's not like this is the situation as we saw with the Penguins at the end of uh, the regular season, where you're kind of counting games and counting points, or uh, even the Steelers, where you say, "Oh, they blew that lead against the Chargers. They blew the game against Denver. They blew the game against Oakland. That would have been one that gets them in the playoffs." But because the Pirates aren't going to be that. Right. Still, though, this is a game you want to win. When Django goes out there and, and gets himself. Two earned runs in his first start doesn't walk anybody. The bullpen, which has been in tatters, was largely pretty good, mopping up five innings after him, allowing just one run after that. And you have an error that basically cost them the game, and uh, this good hitting lineup just wasn't enough to get over against the Marlins. Uh, this one hurts because it is the Marlins, and this guy gives you a spot start that wasn't that bad, and your tattered bullpen gave you a little something was above what we've seen of late. So it, this one stings a little bit. And to, to kind of twist the knife. He had some multi hit games too from guys. You That's know? true. And, and to twist the knife a bit, you got Chris Archer on the mound tomorrow. And that is not very confidence inspiring no. right now with fans. So there's that whole situation too. We'll get some phone calls 412 575 2600 on the Borders and Borders hotline. We got Chuck in Uniontown. Chuck, you're on the Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, Josh and Tim. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. So, uh, anyway, you know, the frustrating thing about tonight's game is the fact that it, the, the deep hole that that seven game losing streak put us into means that games like tonight, even though the Marlins are bad, we were still, we're not playing the U, we're not playing the Miami Hurricanes. This is still the Miami Marlins and they're still a major league club and they're gonna win once in a while. Are, are we sure are we sure the Miami Hurricanes aren't better this year? They could be. You see some of the offensive numbers from the they Miami Marlins? Thanks for the call, Chuck, by the way. Uh, it, you know, matter of fact, points to Chuck for reference in the U. I gotta give him that yeah. too. But it to to his point. And, and Paul Zeiss and I talked about this last night. If there's anything else with this team, they've actually been pretty good at beating the teams they're supposed to beat. Yeah. Except maybe that last series with the Reds where Derek Dietrich just went nuts on them. But they've actually been pretty good at handling those teams they're supposed to beat. It's the ones that are pretty good they can't seem to handle. So I don't yeah, think the opposite of the Steelers there. Right. I, I don't, it, it, that's true. Good point. I, I don't think so. I don't think you're wrong in that assessment as far as as far as Miami's yeah, concerned. Get, get the wins when you can get them. Right. My point is like you know if you overachieve in one area and you got a lot of guys that aren't major league caliber that you're counting on to be really important to you and you got a moment like this just finish off the game is what I'm saying especially when you get yourself out to a lead and you know Adam Frazier is not going to win a lot of gold gloves but he's got to be better than he was on that throw. I agree and he talked about it after the game and he mentioned that it was pretty much his mistake and he talked about how of all people the guy running in the the baseline to second base Harold Ramirez if you remember the name he was a part of the Francisco Liriano trade when he was it's great moving Ramirez. screen is what it was. Yeah, it, it, was. it was like Cousins yeah. trying to get Steph Curry free the other night. Except Ramirez did a better job of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's just a good way to look at it. Let's go to Pete and Squirrel Hill. Pete, you're on the nightly sports call. 
Gentlemen, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? All right, Josh, thanks for taking my call. Josh, about the power game tonight, official scoring. The bottom of the fourth inning, the, the Marlins have first and second, nobody out. A one hopper to call Moran. He doesn't have to move. He doesn't make the play. They scored a hit. Yeah. Sixth inning, Josh Bell comes up. He hits a fly ball to left field. Curtis Granderson, who, by the way, Josh, is 37 years old playing the outfield. He's up there. He's standing at the wall. He puts his glove up. The ball goes one foot to the side of his glove. They scored a double. Do they get these guys? Are they the peanut vendors and the beer vendors to be official scorers? Well, you know what? He didn't a, touch his glove, that's an though, embarrassment. right? embarrassment. It didn't touch his glove? I don't think it touched his glove. If I remember off the top of my head, I don't think Because they were making a big deal about that on the broadcast the other day when that happened in fate. It was Brian Reynolds, right, who hit the ball? And he got credit for a double? Yes. Am I remembering that right? Or was it Dickerson? It was I, one I, I can't remember. One of, one of the Pirates hit a ball. The opposing outfielder screwed it up. Um, and it missed his glove entirely, and the guys were flabbergasted that he was given an error because as much of a botched play as that is, normally they don't assume the hit in that situation. Right. So, there's so another, they don't assume the catch rather than that situation. There's another element that's into this too, and it's a lot more basic than people think. Usually that, that, that uh, official scorer is a guy that lives in that area. He's a local guy. He might even be a member of the local media in some instances or maybe a retired local, uh, local uh, a retired member of the local media. He's going to give a little bit of the home field advantage but, to the but guy. But who, who is always the home field advantage in that? Because you're either screwing the fielder or you're screwing the pitcher. True. But in, in this case, if, you're, if the home team is hitting, they're going to give that home team guy the hit because it benefits the hitter more than it actually probably benefits the defense in that really respect. So it, it does hurt. Yeah, the but the home team fielder still gets mad if he's hit with an error. This is true. But I'm talking about in the case of the home team being the hitters. and I'm talking about the, um, the base hit that gets scored as a hit when probably should have been an error. And, and that's the case. It, it helps the home team guy get the hit. And in the case of the home team being on defense, it prevents the fielder from well, getting Well, what we do know is whenever the home team was the Red Sox, the official score was always wrong if it was negative against David Ortiz. <laughs> and the game stopped, and there was a whole discussion, and there was arguing back and forth from 200 feet of space between the top of Fenway Park's official scoring booth and oh, David goodness. behind home plate. For, for the record, wishing the best of David Ortiz, too. That's right. Really yeah. unfortunate situation with him. Don't want to leave that part out. Um, but he was a, come on, he was a legend oh, for that. Oh, he God. He was a legend for that. It, it's, it, it's funny how, and, and you're not wrong, and it's not like this is the first time we've heard of something like this, but it, it is a common thing we hear about, especially with certain players, that they get kind of protected. I hate to use that word, but they get protected as fielders, especially later on in their careers, knowing that they probably should not be on the field in the first place. So it does yeah. become a thing. Uh, let's go to, we got Bob in Indiana. Bob, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, thanks for taking my call, gentlemen. Thanks for calling in. Hey. Hey, I have a, a question. Maybe you can help me on this. And I know when you're watching the games on TV, the angles are a little bit different. But, right. you know, tonight uh, I have troubles with the play whenever you have a tie game. Uh, and, it, and you're not even up, just that it's a tie game. Call Moran, to, call Moran gets a hit to third base. The guy's maybe maybe two-thirds of the way home. And he goes to first for the out instead of trying to cut the runner down to keep them from getting the lead. And I've seen him do this time and time again, and I don't understand why they do that, especially when they're having a hard time scoring runs. And maybe you can explain to me. I mean, like I say, the angles that you watch on TV, maybe he was more than two stars away, but it didn't seem to be when he had that ball in his hand that he could have got him out. And they just constantly go to first base. Well, that's really been something that's been happening as old as baseball, right, Tim? I mean, that's yeah. not something that's really that confusing. It, it really, really depends on the situation. I want to say that was, what, the fifth inning? If that's in the ninth inning, Morant's probably going to the plate. And the infield's also probably played in. In that particular situation, the, the common consensus is to concede the run. You want to make sure you get the out because you, don't, you never know what might happen with the throw home and then the run scores anyway. That, that's at least the interpretation that I've found over the years. So I don't look that much into it. But at the same time, that's one of those plays, Tim, that if you're a certain fielder, and you have that kind of cachet. Maybe if you're a Nolan Arenado, maybe you have a little bit of leeway to right. make that throw home. So that might be one of those. You guys are constantly trying to hold off Jung Ho Gung or right. Adam Frazier for playing right. time. And if you right. screw it up, then it turns into that's all we're talking about today. Exactly. This is a situation. What a dumb play. Take the out. And we're talking about a team that has one of the, the, the worst third base, you know, productions right now in the league as far as defense goes. So if you're, you're trying to take that risk with Colin Moran, it probably doesn't go too well. And then we're discussing it on the show like Tim mentioned. Got to take a break. Got some more when we come back. Stick around.